In this video, we are going to cover how to use bands to get bigger and stronger. We have four major uses that I'm gonna cover in the video. The first is accessory and isolation work. The second is RNT and physical therapy style training. Third is plyometrics. Fourth is accommodating resistance. I'm gonna explain all of those in a little bit of depth, show you some setup for all of them, then we'll conclude with some considerations. So let's jump in to number one, accessory and isolation work. So the major benefits for accessory and isolation work are that you can create positional and angle changes, and we'll go into the floor and I'll kind of explain that, what that means in training. You can create movement variation and you can do bodybuilding in facilities that aren't really equipped to do a lot of bodybuilding style training. So you don't have a lot of machines, you don't have a ton of dumbbells, a lot of CrossFit affiliates or uh, smaller personal training style gyms that do small group classes want to integrate some bodybuilding style training, but they don't really know how they can coordinate a group to flow. So those are the three major benefits. So let's go over here and I'll explain the positional and angle change. So let's say that you're in a gym that's not kind of like ours is, that's more for sports performance and CrossFit development, and it has a bunch of fixed plane machines. So you have a cable pulley system like this, the fulcrum's way up at the top, and you wanna work on your front double bicep spread so that you can get bigger and stronger and go to a bodybuilding show. So if you're doing a, bi a bicep curl from up here, it's kind of a strange angle to pull from, and if you're always doing your bicep curls on that specific plane and that specific line of action, then eventually you start to stagnate. So just simple changes like having a band that's attached to something allows you to just change the line of action and the line of pull. So instead of it being up there, now if I do a bicep curl from here, I basically can just change the position to have it be exactly where I want it to be to get the training stimulus that I'm looking for. So that's benefit number one, a positional or an angle change. The second, would be movement variation. So a lot of people, they wanna get bigger and stronger. It might just be an aesthetic thing for Instagram, but if you're sports performance training people, then you wanna create a training program that's supporting the strength that they need for their specific style of strength application. So let's use a fighter, for example, or a wrestler. Doing a bunch of bicep curls like this and a bunch of linear action might not make sense because the line of action, when they have to flex their elbow and pull, it could be in a bunch of different planes. They might be going down for a shot and having to pull here. They might be grabbing onto a gi and pulling it down when they're on the ground. So having a ton of variations of lines of action will help. Additionally, you can also get a bunch of different grips. So as an example, if you're just doing traditional bicep curls, you're hanging on to a specific fixed implement, a barbell that has a specific diameter. It never changes. You use the same dumbbells. It never changes. But if I need my hand to be able to grip a gi really well, then I need to be able to squeeze it a lot tighter. So doing something like bands and doing banded bicep curls will literally change the grip that you take on the actual implement. So now my fingers are closed a lot tighter and now the whole functional setup of this same bicep curl action, it's still the same exact thing as if I have a, you know, a dumbbell and I'm doing hammer curls is the same thing, but that little variation allows the application to be a little bit tighter and more uh, specific to what somebody that might need a bicep curl for a different use would be. So that's two, it can create movement variation, just allow you to do a different style of the same movement that might be better used for somebody else. And then the last would be bodybuilding for limited equipment. So if you have a gym that's set up, like even in our gym in our facility here, it's mostly barbells, dumbbells, specialty bars. We do have a dumbbell rack, but if we had 20 people in here and we're trying to put all of them through the same bodybuilding style workout, that would be very difficult. Bands allows you to do a, a much better job of that by setting up stations. So as an example, I got a band here, I got a band here, and I got a band right there. I put all three of these in, a, you know, in the same spot just to illustrate for the purposes of this video, but if you were doing this, I'd probably spread these out. So let's just say I had station number one here, station number two here, station number three there. And let's say the movement that I'm gonna prescribe here for bodybuilding is gonna be face pulls, 
the movement that I'm gonna put here is gonna be traditional bicep curls. This with a hammer curl grip. And then the movement that I'm gonna do here is tricep extensions. Just stand here, pull straight down. Now the benefit of having a setup like this is twofold. One, you can create stations. So let's say you have 15 athletes in a class. You could have five athletes lined up at station one, five athletes lined up at station number two, five athletes lined up at station number three, set a, you know, a 30 second clock, for example, 30 seconds, max reps with a pause at the end of, at the end range of each rep. At the end of the 30 seconds, the next athlete goes. After all five athletes go through station one, you create a rotation. So it basically becomes 30 seconds of work, two minutes of rest, and you can rotate through those different stations. The other benefit of using bands for bodybuilding style of work is one implement. So this one band has a variety of different loading parameters. So if I grab the band really low down here and I go to pull and do a tricep extension, there's not that much tension on the band. However, if I go and I change my hand position up here, now I pull down, when I get down here, there's a lot of tension because this whole part of the band is just slacked and I'm pulling the band from the mid range, which means I'm getting a lot more tension by the time I get down to the bottom of my tricep extension. So if you have a group class, maybe you know a new trainee female might be using the tricep extension and be holding down here and somebody that's been training for 20 years that's stronger and has a higher training history they might be grabbing way up at the top of the band so you get different loading parameters with the same band so you can create different band tension with the same band which allows you to kind of get a better bodybuilding stimulus for a whole group so that was use number one Use number two is RNT and physical therapy. RNT stands for reactive neuromuscular training. Benefits of this are more for warm up, prehab and rehab, or activation and recruitment. So getting stronger or bigger with this style or with this specific use of bands is much more indirect than the other three that we're gonna talk about. It's more, this keeps you healthier, this allows you to warm up and get a better better leverage when you're doing your strength work. And if you compound that over the course of 10 years of training by staying healthier and having better positions, you are therefore stronger. But it's not necessarily a training tool that's gonna make you feel stronger right away. So I'm um, gonna give you a couple examples. So RNT, reactive neuromuscular training, is essentially giving you some sort of a kinesthetic cue that's different than the line of action of a joint. So some that you might have seen would be something like this where you're going and you're doing a reverse lunge, you're trying to improve hip stability, this band is pulling the knee out, so if you just let the tension take you, you'd be in a, this kind of you know, rolled out position, so you have to have some sort of active stability in the hip, maintaining the knee centered, and then you know, doing a movement like a reverse lunge, where basically you're fighting that line of action. Now that could also be for an air squat, where you're going down into a squat and you're preventing the knee from getting pulled out too far. Or you could also do it in the opposite direction where the knee is getting pulled in. But it's just some sort of kinesthetic cue that's giving you tension opposite the line of action of the actual movement. Another one that you might have seen is same type of format. So you're trying to get somebody to do overhead squats and when they overhead squat, you know, they kind of have a bad position and their arms go forward and then the bottom position, they're like this and they dump the bar. So you might want to give them, you know, some light band tension or light band tension on one arm where it's pulling this way and you have to actively be pulling back and then going down into the overhead squat while having the band pull you away from the position that you want. So you're basically having the athlete get a cue that says, okay, pull this back and pull against tension and there's instant feedback if they're not doing that. Another common one would be hip bands. A lot of people you've probably seen will use a hip band like this and do monster walks or any sort of therapy that's gonna activate the outer hips or whatever you wanna do 
to actually activate for the movement that you're trying to prepare yourself to actually do in training. If you're gonna use these movements, you probably wanna have a physical therapist that's prescribing them. Sorry, if you wanna use these movements for rehab or prehab and you have an actual injury, then you need a physical therapist or somebody that actually has a better understanding of anatomy to prescribe the specific drills that would make sense for you to make sure that you can come back from an injury and get back under the barbell or start using dumbbells or kettlebells or whatever your preferred strength implement is. That was number two, RNT and physical therapy. Number three use is plyometrics. The benefit of plyometrics training is that it improves athleticism, jumping ability, and force production. In general, almost every one of the power lifts or weightlifting movements, people will talk about being able to extend your hips or getting to triple extension. And being able to jump well is one of the best ways to have an athletic transfer into doing those skills at a greater level of force production or putting more weight on the bar, which is what people are gonna want to be able to do. I have this big, nice uh, shape that I drew here that says progress slowly. You need to be really careful with plyometrics, especially in untrained people. This is where you can get some knee issues or ruptured Achilles. You wanna make sure that you give people time to adapt to the eccentric loading of the movement. So in order to give you some sort of a progressive model to go after training this, I created three tiers of movements, banded drops, banded jumps, and then rebounding. So first you would do this in a non-banded setting, but because this video is about how to use bands to get stronger, I'm gonna show you how you would use bands to improve plyometric training. So I got a basic setup right here. If you're at a facility that has a Vertimax or has some sort of a, um, a training tool that gives you this type of setup that's already pre-made, then you can do that. But what this setup does is allows you to pretty much do it in any type of a facility. So I have my safety arms on the squat bar, and then I have a band wrapped around here, and then I have a band wrapped around on this side. So I'm gonna take a traditional weightlifting belt, wrap it, out, wrap it up. I'll take my band and I'll just have it wrapped around one time. So this allows there to be a lot of slack and just allows me to kind of easily get it looped in there without a lot of tension. And then I'll show you how to increase the tension after you get it strapped up. Then you do the same thing on the other side. And you tighten the belt. So now I got bands strapped up on both sides. But if you see here, the bands are kind of jiggly, so I don't really have tension in them. So this isn't gonna do me any good if I wanna actually have tension pulling me down. So the best way to kind of increase band tension here is to just wrap in the bottom. So I have one wrap here, so I'll do one on the other side. Now it's starting to get taut, but still there's no tension, so I'll give it another wrap. And now, even as I'm just standing here, I can kind of feel the downward pull. So a banded drop would be our first tier. It would basically be getting onto an elevated platform and teaching myself, as these bands are pulling me down, how to jump off. I'll be pulled down by the band tension, so there's elastic tension right here that's gonna pull me into the ground. And the goal of this exercise is to hit the ground and stop myself from moving. So I don't wanna take it down into a full squat. I basically wanna stop the momentum as quickly as possible because when you're doing plyometric training, teaching yourself to absorb that eccentric loading as fast as possible so that you could change direction is the key. So why I put banded drops in first is to teach people how to absorb that. So you get it to the end of the box and step off, land, and try to stick the landing so you're not moving and not descending. So that would be a banded drop where I'm trying to stick it. This would be if I were just trying to loosely absorb the landing. So if I went off and did that, that's not what I'm looking to do if I'm trying to absorb it for the purpose of plyometric. So again, one more demo here would be there, where I'm trying to stop it instantaneously. So that's tier one. Tier two, same setup, 
where I'm actually just gonna do banded jumps. So I'm gonna jump myself up vertical and then the bands are gonna basically stop me from accelerating up. They're gonna pull me down into the ground and then I'm gonna try to land in the same fashion that I did for that tier one banded jump. So I'm not gonna do a max vertical, but it would just be up, land. So I'm landing, I'm trying to stick the landing. Again, it's not jump, squat and absorb it. You wanna stop as fast as you possibly can. And then the last is rebounding jumps. The goal when you're doing rebounding jumps is to minimize the amount of time you're on the ground. So if you think about a bunny rabbit, when they jump and they go and they jump and land into their next jump when they're taking off, their Achilles tendons and their legs basically spring load really quick and then they absorb that and jump forward. So you wanna kinda have that same mindset that the second your feet hit the ground, you're thinking to go back up in the other direction. So vertical jumps would be here, there. So that was number three, plyometrics. Number four, accommodating resistance. So this is made popular by a lot of power lifters, especially West Side Barbell that use bands and chains a lot. What this essentially is doing, and I think the same thing that could be said with my uh, magical illustration here about progressing slowly can be said down here. You should be mastering or at least getting to a well-trained level with just basic back squat, deadlift, whatever movement that you're actually gonna try to strap bands to. You have to get basic competence before you start adding bands to it. But if you do hit a plateau and you need a different training cycle or a different tool, using bands to change the force curve is something that can be super beneficial. So the benefits of doing accommodating resistance training are twofold. The first is that there will be a requirement for you to maintain tension in your body throughout the entire movement. So what that means essentially is each movement has a specific portion of it that you're stronger in and a specific portion that you're weaker in. So if you watch most people back squat or do squats, for example, they might just do quarter squats like this because your hips are much more active in this position, your knee angles are stronger and you're not getting compressed. But as you go deeper down into the squat, into this range, now my knee angle's tight, my hip is in much more flexion, and you're much weaker in that bottom position than you are in the top position. So bands allow for the tension to be applied to the specific portion of the movement that you have the most mechanical advantage to. And I'll show that with a back squat right here after I cover point number two. Point number two benefit is that it teaches you to push harder as you're gaining leverage. So a lot of beginner lifters, say a bench press for example, you're laying down and you go to push and you have this initial surge of energy there where you go to push out. If you have enough explosiveness through that initial range, the momentum from that initial push can finish the lift for you. But as you get to your one rep max, then you need the ability to continue pushing as you go through, you need to be able to keep pushing as you're getting more leverage and as you're getting stronger through the lift. So applying bands to the bar allows you to get a training reinforcement tool that if you stopped pressing when you're starting to increase band tension, this bar is actually getting heavier and pressing down with more force as I'm getting stronger and pushing up into my lockout. So the bands teach you neurally how to continue to push through a movement. So I use the bench press right here just because it was a li little easier to explain to the camera, but the same thing could be true for a back squat or for a deadlift in the lockout position. As you're getting more leverage in the lift, the weight is essentially getting heavier to match that, which gives you a cue to keep pushing or keep driving to finish. So some basic setup stuff. I have a back squat set up here. I got the spotter arms down here with the bands hooked on. I have the bands on the inside of the collar. So you can put them on the inside of the collar and then the plate would load on top of it to keep the bands in place. I generally like this versus the inside of the collar, but you can set it up however you want. Just make sure that you are cognizant of making sure that they're symmetrical on both sides. The band tension at the bottom should just be such that there's no slack when you get to the bottom of your movement. So for me to do that with these spotter arms, I had to wrap this around twice with these blue bands. 
and this would be different if these were green bands or if these were black bands. You need to just make sure that you get into the position where you're in the bottom and make sure that there's a little bit of tension still on it. And then at the top, there's obviously gonna be more tension because you're going through the movement. So just go through your basic back squat. I'll kind of talk through it as I go down. When I stand up, now this is the most load that I'm gonna be experiencing with this weight. You can see that the bands are all the way stretched out. Now, as I go down, the rubber band is essentially getting de-stretched, which means that when I'm down here, I'm basically holding the barbell with a very, very, very small amount of band tension. Then as I start to press up in this weak range, now the weight's getting heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier, and I'm having to continue to press through the lockout. So this is what we mean by accommodating resistance. The resistance is accommodating the force curve to make sure that you're having to press at the appropriate time and that the weight is getting heavier at the appropriate place in the lift for you. The same thing would happen with a reverse band setup. So if these spotter arms were up here and I had the bands on a deadlift, for example, they're gonna be stretched all the way out so that when I'm pulling the deadlift off the floor, the bands are actually helping and lifting the bar up for me where I have the least mechanical advantage. So if anybody here is watching the video, if you've deadlifted before, you know that breaking the bar off the floor is one of the most difficult parts of the actual lift. Almost everybody fails below the knee on a deadlift. Very few deadlifters, unless you're a, you know, a more developed power lifter who can break the floor really easily, they're gonna miss the lifts on the floor. So the bands would be pulling and giving you the lift off the floor. And then as you're getting higher and higher, the bands are getting compressed, which means they're giving you less assistance pulling it up. And then it allows you to get more weight in the lockout position and less weight on the ground. So reverse band setups and traditional band setups are both gonna accommodate for the force curve in a very similar way. So those are the four major uses of bands that you could use to get stronger or get more jacked in your training. Some considerations if you're gonna do that. First, make sure that you have a safe setup. I've seen some really sketchy setups with bands, people strapping them to light dumbbells, and that is probably not the best strategy if you hope to use bands in a way that you're gonna progress the loading and the band tension over time. Because at some point, the band tension is gonna be so high that it'll pull the dumbbells off the ground. That can be unstable, and you don't want a super, super unstable platform when you're loading your spine. So make sure that you have a safe setup. It's attached to something concrete like this, a spotter arm that's actually hooked into the rig, or a pull-up bar, or something that is fixed and secure, not something that's just sitting down on the ground. Second is band quality. So I, you hold on one second for me. I see this, I'm back. At gyms a lot, you see these bands, they're kind of fraying. So if you're just doing like X band walks with this, you know, just the, from point number two, you're doing the RNT stuff and you're doing these, probably not that big of a deal. If you're doing banded strength work with something like this, the likelihood of this snapping is way, way, way higher. So make sure that you are checking your bands on a regular basis and upgrading them, or just have a separate little group of bands that's used specifically for strength work and not for just the accessory work or stretching or RNT or physical therapy or the second major use that we already talked about. That's number two. Point number three, is accurate loading. I'm gonna show you that real quick separately, but just number four, make sure you have spotters for global movements when possible. So if you're gonna do banded back squats, if you can optimally have a spotter on both sides while you're back squatting that can actually pull the bar off, just because the bands add so much of an unstable surface and a change in tension, if you get rocked off balance, that's generally the time where people are gonna be more at risk of injury than just doing traditional back squats that you can dump it. And coming out of the rack. And yeah, and coming out of the rack, because like the setup right here, the bands, you want the band's line of action to be straight down when you're back squatting. So this is where it would be attached to the bar. It's straight up and down, perpendicular. But when you're actually in the rack, 
it's, it's off axis this way. So when you're coming out of the rack, this initial like stepping up and getting back into your stance before you squat is kind of a sketchy position. So if you're with beginners or you haven't done a lot, or really even if you're an advanced lifter, just to be more safe, you're better off having spotters and people that are there that could potentially help you from having some sort of a catastrophic issue taking place. So to the accurate loading. This applies for people that are much more serious about getting stronger and using bands to get stronger. So this is just a traditional fishing scale. It's pretty simple, it's got a power button, you turn it on, if it works. It has a hook right here. So basically what people would do is they put a fish on here, you hang the fish and it's gonna give you a weight. So the way that you would actually use this is we did a series of measurements where I did, Chris can chop in the images, where I got to the top of my back squat and he put this little mark right here. I got to the top of my deadlift and we put this mark right here. And then I got to the top of my, be my bench press and I put this mark right here. So if you have a gym, the best thing that you could do is have one of these and then you can just count what number, um, what number hole that you're at. So let's say for example, this is from the pull-up bar down, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 and a half is the top of my bench press. So I'd get a whiteboard and a marker, 14.5 down, back squat, then here's 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 and a half. Down is my bench press. Then 25, 26, 27, 28, 29 and a half is my deadlift. I'm just gonna show one band when I do this just for ease of use. So now my body is never going to change in terms of height that these are ever going to be different. So I only have to go through this measurement series one time to know for me because you're measuring band tension at the top of the lift. So if I say I want 50% of band tension of your one rep max at the top of the lift, you're measuring band tension up here at the top of the back squat, not measuring band tension way down at the bottom where I'm gonna have less tension on it. So if you have an athlete that's five foot 11, like I am, you might need to go through a series of measurements. If you have an athlete that's five foot two, they might have their own series of measurements. So a blue band for me at the top is gonna impose a different amount of tension than a blue band for somebody who's five foot three at the top. You also have to take into consideration that your setup is the same all the time on the spotter arm. So if I have this set up here, it's gonna potentially be different tension than if I have it set up here. So let's just do three wraps, four wraps for the deadlift and the bench press and then I'll take one of the wraps off for the back squat, just to give you an example of how you'd measure it. So my thing is zeroed out. This is the top of my lift. Now I hook this on there. And at the top of my deadlift, this would be imposing 10 pounds of downward force with a blue band with three wraps around. If I go up to the top of my bench press, then now, you know, I'd probably have a partner here to help me do this if I wasn't just on camera, but making sure that it's parallel to the top. Now I have about 18 pounds of pressure that's pulling down at the top of my bench press. And then I can actually just keep this here. Band tension at the top, 32 pounds at the top of my back squat. So if I had this, on one side and this on the other side, at the top of my back squat, I'd have 64 pounds of band tension at the top. So I'd add that to the actual weight that I had on the barbell. And this allows me to make sure that I can get accurate loading. 
And then accurate loading allows you to make sure that you can create training progressions and you know exactly how much weight people have on the bar when they're doing their strength work so that you can create progressive overload, create training cycles, and allow people to get better over time. So those are the four major uses that we have for bands and some considerations to make sure you use them safely and effectively. In the classroom, our TTT educational product, we're gonna cover more programming considerations, so when to use them, when not to use them, how to progress them, and giving you some example training sessions with loading parameters to make sure that you understand what band tension should be applied to the bar to get a specific strength response. It's a wrap, you know what I'm saying? Your boy Project Pata in this thing, man. Hey, look, man, thank y'all for watching Training Think Tank YouTube channel. Y'all hit that motherfucking subscribe button, you know what I'm saying? So y'all go ahead, man. Thank y'all for watching the channel, you know what I'm saying? Hit that motherfucking subscribe button, let it be known, let it be known, let it be known, you know what I'm saying? Hat-ta!